So let's get into the cousin stuff. Um, he moved to the Atlanta Falcons. And uh, as a result, I mean, like, you look at this roster, they've got all the guys on offense. They got the quarterback. If he's healthy and he's able to play, he's not too old. Um, you know, they got a defense that should could be even better with Raheem Morris coming into town. Um, how are you projecting this uh, Falcons offense, Prop Stars, when you, when you look at, you know, and, and do you see any value – in uh, cousin specials, whether it's uh, throws for X number of passing yards, we got all these from FanDuel. Is over under for passing yards 4,100 4, and a half, and then 28 and a half passing touchdowns? All right, I think the Kirk Cousins addition is going to have a significant uh, impact on this Vikings offense. Went from arguably the worst quarterback play in the NFL over the past uh, two plus seasons to arguably a top 10 quarterback. Uh, we know. Uh, it's been so frustrating watching Kyle Pitts and Drake London uh, really not cash in on just this uh, tremendous upside that both players possess, really as a result of the offense, as a result of Arthur Smith. Obviously, both uh, are gone now, which I think just is a big plus for both of these guys. I also like the the additional moves as well, adding Darnell Mooney, I think, will take the lid off the defense. He offers some speed on the perimeter. Uh, Rondale Moore, more of a Swiss Army knife. You can use utilize him in a variety of ways. We know Bijan Robinson in the backfield. Uh, so this Falcons offense, I expect to be extremely explosive. Uh, as far as value is concerned, that's a little bit of a different story. If we look at some of Cousins' uh, season-long props, that are available right now. Uh, the odds makers are also expecting the Falcons to be a very productive offense. I think Cousins will have a good shot to potentially lead the NFL in passing yards, especially if the Falcons' defense mm. is middling and they could be pushed. I expect it to look similar to what we saw in the first half of the season for Minnesota. I just think there's that much talent on this Atlanta offense as well. Uh, I should preface by stating if I'm playing season-long props, uh, it's really hard for me to invest in an over uh, as far as a season long market is concerned. Um, so nothing that really grabs my attention here. I would be looking to see if there's a discount on someone like Kyle Pitts, who obviously had the tremendous rookie season and then really, uh, you know, followed it up with two subpar seasons. I think injuries played a role, obviously uh, wasn't great quarterback play as well, uh, but nothing that I'm rushing to get in right now, Brinson, but I will be, waiting to see what Kyle Pitts is season long receiving yards, possibly even Drake London as well. So you mentioned lead the NFL in regular season passing yards. That was plus 1600 at FanDuel. That's a special up there. Do you think there's value in that? Or are you still not playing that one? I think there's a bit of value in that. That'd be something I might put like a 10th of a unit on. Um, I do think the odds are fairly appropriate though. I think his odds last year with the Vikings were similar around plus 1500 to lead the NFL in passing yards. So I just don't see a lot of, standalone value there. I, if I were to pick a bet, though, that would be uh, where I'd look, RJ. Yeah, um, so you look at the yardage. We said 4,100 and a half. 4,100 yards is 241.2 points per game over 17 games. He's beaten that average in eight of nine seasons as a starter. So if he plays 17 games, you got to expect he's going to get over that number. But returning from Achilles injuries is tricky. Um, we don't see it typically from quarterbacks a ton. Um, but for the running backs and receivers, they have not been very productive when they come back. Obviously, it's a different skill set, but, you know, you need to throw with your whole body, too. So I'm not going to completely discount it. Um, so if we assume he's back in week one and fully effective, you know, I think that this is an over number. But I don't think we can assume that. We just kind of have to wait and see how he looks. He's 36 in August. Uh, even if he was fully healthy, he likely only had two to maybe three or four years of, of effective play left in his career. Um, perfectly healthy with the injury, we don't know. So um, if I'm playing and I'm leaning to the under just due to the injury status and not knowing what's going to happen in week one. But if he looks good in camp, I think this number rises and, and his prop is going to go up from here. Yeah, I'm with you there. I think that in particular with Cousins, even and even if he looks good in camp, there's not a guarantee that they are going to like – come out of the gate saying, all right, we're going to throw the ball, you know, 50 times per game. I still think that they're, you know, this is this is a team like, I think about Zach Robinson's coming from the Sean McVay, you know, uh, offense. I think it's very possible that they say, look, we're going to, we got a good offensive line. We got these weapons. Let's, you know, let's try and run the ball with B. John Robinson and Tyler Allegier. And, you know, Kirk's going to throw, but we don't want him to come out, you know, dropping back. 50 times a game. I mean, that's not, you know, that's not the, that's not the winning formula. If you're, if you're the Atlanta Falcons, I, I do, I will say I have a lot of exposure. I did a bunch of um, like the underdog best ball drafts where it's, you know, you have the, 
they do the, the big board, which is like before free agency. You can draft before free agency and before the draft and like during the free agency, which is really fun because you're, you know, you're, you're sort of predicting where stuff might go. I got a lot of uh, Justin Fields, maybe unfortunately a quarterback, but um, I got a ton of Bijan Robinson because I, I was thinking Fields to Atlanta. And so I was building out these like Fields, Bijan. Uh, Kyle, Kyle Pitts is my most uh, most uh, like rostered or expo- the highest exposure tight end. I have. I was just looking at it a second ago. And, I mean, I think it's like I, I think it is very exciting for this Falcons offense and what it can be if he's completely healthy. But I think that they might ease him in a little bit. The Falcons, uh, every Vegas is excited about the Falcons because they are the favorites to win the division at minus one ten. The Bucks at three to one. Saints plus three forty. And then you have the Panthers all the way down at 10 to 1. RJ, when you look at this, uh, in particular with the NFC South, you know, I, I think the time to buy the Falcons was before the Cousins rumor started, before he actually went there. Um, but I got to tell you, I mean, you know, minus 110, I don't know. It, it's not that great a price. I think maybe the Buccaneers at 3 to 1 more interesting just because they've, they've won it before and we know they have a healthy quarterback. Yeah, it's too much of a swing for me to make Atlanta lay money here to win the division. New co- new quarterback and coming off an injury, new coach. I still have some questions about the defense. Um, I don't know that they're going to be a top, you know, half of the league unit. Um, and then, you know, they added Cousins. They added some receiver depth. Um, I would have liked to see them do more on defense. Tampa, you know, I agree that they're a good value at 3-1. to one. They brought Baker Mayfield and Mike Evans back. I don't know why they're supposed to be worse. You know, they, they lost Dave Canales at O.C., but their new OC um, is, uh, I believe Liam Cohn is his name, was the Rams yep. OC when Baker did enough to earn a chance to start in the league. Yeah, that, you know, well, his statistics weren't great, but, you know, he did enough to show that he could start. And uh, he went to Tampa Bay and, and you know, we know what happened from there. So um, I think Baker has already had a little bit of experience with them. I think that they're going to click pretty well based on that 2022 experience. I think Tampa is a clear value play here. Um, I think Carolina at plus a thousand doesn't mm-hmm. deserve to be oh, that no. long of odds just because the, the division should be a little more op- wide open. Um, there's no reason why Atlanta should be like the predominant favorite. We don't think they're going to run out and win 12, 13 games. Carolina was a train wreck last year, put brought in a lot of new talent, new coach, um, you know, really focused on upgrading on defense and the offensive line um, and brought in some receiver help too. So, I mean, you know, they could get in the mix here. I don't think they're going to go from one win to winning the division, but we saw what Houston did as one of the worst teams last year. Um, and Bryce Young, I don't think is a complete, you know, zero. I think that he just was put in a bad position. So I'm okay with a little sprinkle there, but I think the best value is Tampa. Yeah, I tend, I tend to agree on the, on the box. Anything, uh, but uh, let's we'll talk about the, the win total here. Uh, prop. We've got the Falcons, and uh, and and we can look at the regular season specials too. They've got a 15, 15, uh, 15 to one Falcons to sweep the NFC South. I don't know if I like that. Uh, also, Falcons to win ten plus regular season games. We don't have win totals, of course, because um, it's you know it's it's still it's still March. We'll get them probably in April or May once the schedule comes out. But the Falcons to win ten plus regular season games minus one sixty five, and then you look at their odds to to. Uh, is it to get to the NFC title game six to one to get to the NFC title game 13 to one to be the number one seed in the NFC uh, anything along those lines uh, interest you at all uh, those all seem fairly appropriate to me Brinson we can kind of project what their uh, win total is going to be considering 10 plus wins is minus 165 I'd imagine <laughs> their win total will be 10 and a half uh, wins <laughs> yeah, on the season uh, but yeah I, I think these again like you had pointed out Brinson and RJ had mentioned too the value was pro- was speculating with Atlanta's roster prior to the acquisition of Kirk Cousins. Now that he's there, I think, you know, uh, they're, they're obviously the overwhelming favorite here. Uh, as far as other value plays, I agree. I think Carolina actually has had the best offseason besides the Atlanta Falcons of any team in the division. Love what they did the interior of the offensive line. Uh, I really think that Bryce Young will be in a better situation to have more success next season. And I think the division's, frankly, uh, more open uh, you know, this is an, a strong division. It wouldn't surprise me at all if Carolina was competitive here and uh, potentially, you know, a couple things break right in their favor. Uh, Kirk Cousins gets off to a slow starter, isn't the same quarterback coming off the injury. Uh, I could see Carolina potentially winning this division. So, yeah, I think the value would be there as far as Falcons uh, stuff is concerned. Yeah, I think all these numbers are very efficient. Yeah, I'm not playing any of these Falcons numbers. Um, you know, you, you typically when you're doing win totals, 50 cents is a half a win. Um, so when, when you're doing the math, so at uh, 10 plus at minus 165, I think the number's probably going to be right on 10. You would make it 10 minus 115 on the over. So that should be kind of where it settles in at that number. I mean, 10 and seven seems 
okay, but let's say they sweep the division home games, go three and one against the Giants, Seattle, Pittsburgh, and the Chargers all at home, and then lose to the Chiefs and Dallas at home. You're looking at six wins there, so they need to get five more. Um, you need or four more if you're going to win this minus 165 bet. So you need those four road wins. They're, let's say they go one and two in division, you know, get a win at Carolina, but I mean, it could be three and three, it could be two and one, or oh and three, it could be two and one. Well, uh, then you go at Denver, at Vegas. We don't know what the weather will be like in that Denver game, so we don't know the schedule. So let's say one one there. Um, they get a loss at Philly, you know, probably. So they need to win both Kirk Cousins' revenge games. It's going to be a big year for for <laughs> Will on this this podcast because Kirk Cousins plays Washington and plays Minnesota both on the road this year. So if they win both of those, they get to ten. Um, if if they split them, you know, I don't think they get there. So my lean, just of course, when we talked about Cousins' health, would be not to play the ten games. If it was ten minus one fifteen, my lean's going to be to the under there. Um, but but yeah, I'm not really rushing out to play the Falcons right now. Yeah, you absolutely do not take the uh, heavily juiced win X number of games in March with a quarterback coming off an ACL tear uh, and heading to a new city. That's just, or excuse me, an Achilles. Achilles, not ACL tear. That's just not good value.